How can you be confident that that money will go towards uh, the reconstruction, the rebuilding and supporting of the civilian population there? Good afternoon, Samantha, and thank you for having me. Uh, indeed, uh, what happened uh, in Gaza was catastrophic. And uh, let's go back to the root causes of this. It's not uh, Israel vis-a-vis uh, -vis military groups. Uh, it's uh, actually started all with uh, the ethnic cleansing that was happening in Sheikh Jarrah uh, neighborhood. And talking about two sides to this uh, aggression uh, is uh, a misrepresentation of uh, the uh, situation. We're talking about a nuclear state that has one of the strongest armies globally and a stateless uh, people. Now, to the reconstruction efforts, uh, yes, we have commissioned uh, half a billion US dollars, and uh, most of that will be going for rebuilding houses uh, within the coming five to six months, uh, we are confident that we can rebuild around uh, 45 housing units. This in addition, this is in addition to rebuilding some of the other facilities. For example, the Qatari Red Crescent was demolished uh, in this uh, war or in this attack on, on Gaza. So uh, some of that will go to this. There was, of course, the uh, demolishing of Al Jala building, which hosted the Associated Press journalists as well as Al Jazeera. Uh, journalists. So there is a lot to be done in addition to the uh, Hamad Rehabilitation uh, Hospital, which was partially damaged in this attack. Okay, you, you said most of it there. Um, is, uh, is other portion of the money earmarked for other things? Well, in the past, what happened was that 50% of the aid was going to the energy sector. Uh, as you know, the uh, Palestinians, two million Palestinians in Gaza, were living with two hours of electricity per day until Qatar intervened to increase this to 16 hours per day. So some of that amount might go to the electricity sector as well. And in the past, 50, the other 50% of the uh, previous aid used to go uh, to the poorest families uh, in Gaza, uh, 100 US dollars per family. This is the, barely the minimum that any family can live with to provide their food and medication. And I should highlight here that our aid in general, Qatar, does not only go to Gaza, it goes also to West Bank. For example, the largest housing project in West Bank, that is Arawabi project, was built by Qatar. And the first Christmas tree that was lit in 2018 was actually in that project. Minister, the reason I ask you is because I've done many interviews on this in the last few weeks and many representatives from Israel say that a lot of the aid money has gone for Hamas to build up its armaments. Um, is this aid money from Qatar, does that have Israeli government approval and it, it's not in violation of sanctions against Hamas? This claim is absolutely inaccurate. Uh, whoever has been uh, talking to you, Samantha, was not saying the truth. Yes, we do exercise very, very strict measures on our aid in general, and this has been done through the UN, and obviously with the approval of Israel, because to Gaza you have two passages. It's either through Egypt, and it wasn't going through Egypt, so it has to be going through other means, and that is, in this case, with the approval of the Israel. So, no, the, question, the answer is everything has been going either to the electricity sector or to humanitarian purposes. Uh, most of the commentators from Israel who are saying this, they're saying this for domestic reasons and political reasons for election purposes, basically. Your country is in a fairly unique position of being able to uh, be able to help mediate um, between Israel and Hamas. Um, there's a, there's a ceasefire at the moment. How confident are you that that ceasefire will hold? Well, we have to remain optimistic. This was brokered through efforts from the side of Qatar, Egypt, Jordan, in coordination with the United States. Uh, yet, wha what we're concerned about is addressing the root causes of this. Uh, as you know, this problem all started in Jerusalem with Sheikh Jarrah neighborhood. And unfortunately, 
uh, the uh, same uh, measures taken against the uh, Palestinians there are still remain in place, so we need to address this as well. And let me remind everyone that the problem is not Israel Hamas, it's basically the struggle of the Palestinian people for the past 73 years. We're talking about s stateless people. Uh, in Gaza alone, there are two million people who are living uh, in an open air prison, but we're also talking about many other millions who are refugees, and we're talking about uh, Oslo that was never fulfilled, not because of the Palestinians. Let's remember that the two leaders who signed Oslo were finished not by the, by the Palestinians. One of them was assassinated by an Israeli fanatic. The other one died under siege after three years of siege. That was Yasser Arafat. So uh, once again, we need to address this issue holistically. For this uh, Minister, society, do you think that Western work nations... We're working relentlessly with the Egyptians, with the Americans, I'm, I'm sorry, there's a time lag so that we keep talking over each other. Do you think that it is now the time where Western nations need to deal with Hamas? Well, I think it's about time for the Western nations to stop the unconditional support, both moral and financial and, in fact, political, to Israel. It is unconditional support. The issue, once again, it's not about Hamas. This reductionist approach of reducing the struggle of the Palestinian people since 1948 to only Hamas is very problematic. Hamas was only founded in 1984. There were decades of suffering before Hamas ever existed. So yes, it's about time for the Western nations to start approaching this holistically and stop the struggling of the Palestinian people and find a just and viable solution for all nations, basically. Calls from all over the world for an investigation into war crimes on both sides. The United States says any war crimes investigation will imperil the ceasefire. What do you think? I don't think this is accurate, Samantha. What the Human Rights Commissioner said was that the aggression from the side of Israel could amount to war crimes. She didn't say the same about the attacks from the uh, side of the uh, of Gaza, basically. So uh, once again, we're not talking about two sides. We're talking about a nuclear uh, state with one of the strongest armies globally and stateless people who have been suffering for decades. Uh, Samantha, uh, those kids were ki killed, basically from uh, the side of the Palestinians. Those are not Hamas, and not only, by the way, the Palestinians. Do you remember Rachel Corey, the American activist, who was killed by the Israelis in 2003? They are killing journalists, they are killing activists, not to say the truth. So once again, it's not a two-side aggression, it's basically an occupation and Israel is the last colonial power that we know of in our time and age. And Minister, with current uh, leadership on both sides, uh, how do we find a two-state solution? That is indeed the question. I think the answer starts with fulfilling all the obligations. Uh, we have Oslo Agreement, we have the Arab Peace Initiative, that was put forward in 2002, and we have the UN security resolutions. So I think fulfilling those obligations will lead us to somewhere. Otherwise, it will be very, very difficult to maintain the current situation. And of okay. course, we, as the state of Qatar, remain open to play any role to facilitate a just solution. Really good to talk to you this afternoon. Uh, Lulua Al-Kata, thank you for your time on Sky News.